G'day guys, welcome to another episode of Get Camping. Today we're installing a cheap Chinese diesel air heater into our Jayco Sterling Caravan. We're going to talk about the pros and the cons and also a bit of a step-by-step -step installation process. So stick around. Cool. Alright, so what are the pros, the cons and the considerations you need to make? So let's talk about the pros. So the pros for this diesel heater is $159 delivered to my door. Uh, that's pretty bloody darn cheap. Uh, I don't think you can get much for $159 these days. Uh, so this came with the whole kit included, the fuel tank, the controller, the whole, the whole lot. Um, so I think that's really good value. The other pro is you can install these yourself. So that's fantastic. Um, especially if you've got a little bit of knowledge and you've got the right tools and equipment, you can do this yourself. So that's, that's, that's definitely another thumbs up for me. Uh, the cons. Uh, well, this one, I suppose, is, you know, there's a lot of people saying out there, and, and I don't think, these are the people that don't have the experience, I think, with these diesel heaters, is that they're saying, you know, that they're a fire risk and, you know, you're going to put your, 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 your life and your, and your family's lives in, in jeopardy. I don't think that's the case. Um, I've done my own research on, on, on Google um, and asked around, but I have not found a single um, fire that has been caused by one of these diesel heaters or an injury. So, you know, there's thousands of these sold in Australia, overseas. So, you know, I, I think the... the the risk is negligible. It's no different than than, than buying the, the, the $2,000 unit. So, um, all right, considerations. So considerations is obviously, where are we gonna mount this sucker? So it's a, this one's the two kilowatt, so it's a little bit smaller than the five kilowatt unit, um, but we're probably gonna fit it underneath the bed. So um, we've got a couple, like where the seat that I'm sitting on now, that's where all our battery and charging equipment is. We've got a, a little bunk system over here, which is gonna be modified uh, probably in the next couple of videos. Um, we're gonna change that up. Uh, so that you can do it yourself. Um, and then we've got our kitchen, which is behind the camera. So uh, most logical and best place that we think to put the diesel heater is underneath the bed. So we're going to go through that now. All right, I'm underneath the bed. Um, this is where we're actually going to fit our diesel heater, uh, which is right here in the center of the bed. This will actually blow the air down towards the front of the van. Uh, I've just got to drill a couple of pilot holes just to make sure that there's nothing underneath uh, that's going to stop us from mounting the, uh, the unit here. All right, so I've just had a look underneath the uh, the van and we've got a water tank that sits uh, where the original placement of the diesel heater was gonna be. So that's not a ideal spot. So we're just gonna put the diesel heater just around the corner here. Um, so we'll drill a couple of holes here and then we'll actually run the duct at the front of the uh, the cupboard here. Alrighty, so I've got underneath the, uh, the caravan and had a look where I've drilled the hole and yeah, it's perfect. So what I need to do now is drill a uh, 100 mil hole um, I've picked up off a couple of the uh, the hints and tips from some other people that have installed these is to go to Bunnings and buy yourself this 100mm metal flange. And basically what that will do is drill a 100mm hole here and then when, when the actual unit is mounted, all your exhaust and your inlet are nicely shielded uh, so you don't have any of that sort of risk of, uh, of heating up the, uh, the, the floor of the, the van. So um, I'll go ahead and do that now. Here goes. All right, and just like that, we've got a 100 mil hole in our caravan. Uh, so, wow. All right, so next thing is we've got to uh, stick the flange in. Um, so the flange will then just drop in like that. And then the plate that comes with the unit um, will sit in on the top of the plate. But one thing I will do is I'll actually cut out the vinyl underneath the, uh, the plate just so that the, the plate sits nice and flush. Beautiful. All right, so the next job we have to do is actually mount the base plate uh, to the to the unit itself. Um, I've put a little bit of Loctite on these threads because they give you they do give you nuts. However, they uh, the nuts don't um, have any spring washers or anything on them. So basically, just mount the uh, the plate onto the unit like this, and just spin the uh, the nuts on. Alrighty, so we've uh, fitted the uh, the base plate uh, to the unit. We're also going to fit the um, exhaust and the intake um, hoses on as well. 
and then we'll slide them in. That'll just make it easier so we're not, when we're not when we're running the van, we're not having to connect up hose clamps and all do all that sort of stuff. So we'll go ahead and we'll fit them now. All right, so we just fitted the exhaust and the air intake hose using the supplied hose clamps. As I said, it, it just makes it so much easier if you fit it now, rather than having to lay on your back and try to do up hose clamps underneath the van. So um, one thing I also will do is on the bottom of this plate where it um, uh, touches the, the van floor, I'll use some fire retardant silicon just so we've got a nice strong bond. Alrighty, so just drilling the uh Intake now for the uh, for the unit. All right, now it's time to fit the hot air outlet to the uh, from the unit to the vent. All right, so we just connected the uh, outlet hose uh, up to the uh, to the unit itself, and then out to the vent, uh, just using the supplied ho hose clamps and the and the ducting. Pretty easy job to do. They only give you about a meter, so uh, just be careful. Um, it is rubbing there a little bit on the corner, but I'll just see how that goes. Alrighty, so I'm about halfway through the install. I'm actually really happy the way it's gone. Actually, um, the main unit's been fitted. I've hooked up the ducting and the inlet and outlet pipes. Uh, which is which is nice. I've got to go down underneath the van now and mount the exhaust um, to the muffler uh, and also hook up the uh, intake um, system. So, but overall, yeah, really happy. I haven't followed the instructions. I've been I'm actually looking at uh, YouTube and and watching a couple of other people install their. Um, their, their diesel heaters and getting some really, really good advice. So um, hopefully I can share this uh, onto you. So let's go down underneath the van and hook that up. Alrighty guys, I'm uh, underneath the van now. Um, surprise, surprise, the uh, the kits actually shortchanged me two hose clamps uh, for the uh, for the muffler. However, I do have two spare in the garage, so I'll go and grab them and we'll get the muffler fitted. I will have to uh, modify the bracket just to suit my needs. Um, it is a, a right angle, so I'll straighten that out and then fix that up onto the uh, onto the uh, onto the rail up here, and then um, yeah, we'll keep going. So there's the uh, the base uh, poking through the floor. Uh, looks pretty neat. Um, quite like the uh, the flange. That definitely um, um, makes the job look nice and neat. Uh, and then there's the uh, the exhaust uh, that pokes out to the side. Now I'm going to have to get an extension on that. The uh, the exhaust that they they supply is not long enough at all. Uh, and the air intake. I'll just uh, route that up here and then put the uh, the air intake um, filter just on here and then zip tie that up somewhere. So. Yeah, all in all, looking uh, looking pretty good. Alrighty, so the exhaust is all fixed now, and the air intake system is all sort of mounted up. Um, if you look at the uh, the exhaust, you'll notice that the uh, I've mounted it in a vertical uh, orientation. Now that's for the condensation hole down here, down the bottom. Um, to allow it to drip. Otherwise, what can happen is that you can actually, from what I've read, is you can actually get white smoke that sort of builds up and, and obviously you don't want that. So um, yeah, that's what that condensation uh, hole is for there. All right, so the next part of the install is connecting the fuel line and the fuel tank. A couple of key considerations you need to think about where you're going to be mounting your fuel tank and what type of fuel tank you're gonna be actually mounting. So I'm going to be mounting the one that came with the kit uh, it's a 10 litre slimline tank, and I'm gonna be mounting that in the front boot. Now the reason why I'm mounting it in the front boot is that I don't really have any other place that I can actually mount the, the unit, and it seems like it's the best spot for my sort of circumstances. Um, the other consideration is that you need to think about is the position of the fuel pump. So in relation to the fuel tank, the fuel tank and the pump can't be any more than sort of two meters apart. That's what the instructions say. However, these pumps can push fuel quite a long way. So I think it's about up to eight meters they can push. So um, the location of where the fuel pump is um, to the tank is a, um, less than two meters. So I'm gonna be mounting this fuel pump uh, at the front of the caravan and then run the fuel line 
uh, towards the rear of the van uh, up to the unit. So we're going to get into that now. All right, so first part of the install is fitting the, uh, the fuel line connection. So there's actually two little raised lumps on either side of the tank here, and that's where that uh, fuel line goes. So what we need to do is just drill a, um, a hole in there, and then, um, then we'll slide that through. Alright, so the, uh, the trick to getting uh, this little bit here fitted into the tank, um, basically just use a bit of wire, uh, this is an old coat hanger, and you basically just feed it through, push out the top here, like so. We simply just slide this on, I'll just put a little bend on it, just on the end, and basically you just pull that through, and voila, just like that. So then from there, uh, we just put the nut on, we screw the nut on nice and tight, uh, and it's also got some uh, uh, these little o-ring washers, and that basically seals the, uh, um, the fitting uh, from leaking. So next part of the uh, the install is connecting up the uh, the fuel line and the hose clamp onto the fuel tank. Alright, so you can see the uh, the fuel line that's poking through the hole in the floor from the front boot. Uh, we're going to be installing the uh, the fuel filter um, just here, so it's nice and close to the fuel tank. And then we're going to uh, then run the fuel line over to the fuel pump. All right, so I've finished uh, running the uh, the fuel line from the tank. I've also just run a little bit of the fuel line um, just so that I can um, get the position of the pump. Um, so this is the pump here. So they're notoriously noisy. So I'm trying something. I'm, I'm being innovative. Um, and I'm actually trying to do a, um, a bit of a soundproof box. So the plan is, is to mount the box up here and the pump will be mounted inside the, uh, inside the box. Um, and what I've got to do is I'll actually fill the uh, the box with some some foam, so uh, the pump will sit on an angle like it should, and it'll be mounted up to the top like that. So we're going to try it. Uh, it may work, it may not work, but we'll we'll give it a go.
All right, so we've finished uh, mounting the uh, fuel pump into the little box. I reckon it looks pretty neat. So um, if you've got any other ideas of how to silence these pumps, let us know, but fingers crossed this works. Uh, next step is to run the fuel line uh, from the actual pump itself. I've connected it up here. I've still got to connect it to the, uh, the diesel heater end uh, and then put some fuel in, uh, prime the line. And I will show you a neat little trick on how to prime that line um, that a, a mate has shown me. So anyway, we'll uh, keep going. Alright, so I've run the fuel line underneath the van and it's all hooked up. Um, while I was doing the fuel line, I also did the power cable. So the power cable just pokes up through here through the floor uh, and it's connected directly to the battery via a 20 amp fuse. What I'd also did, I actually changed the power cable over to a thicker gauge. Uh, the stuff that it came with is pretty thin. So I took the opportunity um, so I don't have any problems down the track. So next thing to do, we need to chuck some fuel in and prime the line and fingers crossed, it fires up. All right, powered up and working. So what we're gonna do now is just take you through how to uh, prime the pump. So uh, fingers crossed it all works, but from what I understand is that you push the settings and the arrow button together. Oh, I just missed it. And that brings the H and says off. Um, so to activate the, the pump, we can just click the uh, left arrow. And then you might be able to hear that in the background. So we can, we can hear the pump slightly. Now the pump cover hasn't been on yet. So what we'll do is we'll just leave this for a little bit uh, so it primes up and then we'll uh, then turn that off and then hit the, uh, the power button. Alrighty, so we've got that all primed up now. Um, now it's just a matter of pushing the power button and hopefully it works. So I can hear the fan turning on. We've got air coming out there so far. Now, I think it takes about five or so minutes for the actual uh, unit to start getting up to temp and then starting to fire. So we'll wait and see what happens, but fingers crossed it all works. Right, guys install went really well a little bit longer than what I originally thought it was going to take uh, end up taking the better part of a day a um, couple of considerations you need to think about uh, is where you're actually putting your tank and your fuel pump I end up having to buy some extra fuel hose from Repco some 4.8 millimeter hose and some extra uh, cable for the power supply and the fuel pump line so just take that into consideration um, also my little magic silent box didn't quite work exactly the way I thought it was going to. Um, uh, the end up pulsing um, sound ended up coming through the, uh, the floor of the caravan as well, even though it was in that little box. So what I've actually done is I've actually unscrewed it from the chassis rail and then actually attached some rubber straps uh, to the to the bottom of the uh, the box and then mounted it so it's suspending. Um, and it definitely has quieted it down a lot. I don't think you're ever going to get away. Uh, from the, the, the ticking sound, but if you do have any ideas or that have worked for yourself um, Or you can come up with something else, please let me know. Um, so comment below I'd love to find out because that's probably my only little pet hate with the diesel heater. So anyway Thanks for watching. I really hope this has helped you out 
And if you haven't already, make sure you uh, like and subscribe the channel and make sure you hit that bell notification so next time when I drop a video online, uh, you get notified. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.